Hello, my lovely ladies, and welcome to this week's edition of Menopause Made Easy with Tanya. As you can tell, I still haven't made the time to learn the new system of taping my intro and all of that, but eventually I will. But it also highlights the mental energy and the time energy it takes to learn something brand new. And I always get this because, you know, when we have a habit and it's become second nature to us, it's easy to do. But when we're learning new habits, it can be like, oh my gosh, I forgot, or I just don't have the mental strength to deal with this, or how do I fit it into my time? And so I know I share a lot of information with you on this podcast, like we're going to talk about dry brushing today, something that only takes two minutes, but yet any routine, big or small, you know, it is really important to understand habit looping, see where it is on your scale of one to 10. Do you really want to do it? And I guess apparently right now, I don't want to learn how to tape intros and outros and learn a whole new recording system. So that is why I'm still doing it the old way. <laughs> but anyway, okay, I have been dry brushing since about 2008 and I love it. And I'm going to tell you six reasons why adding dry brushing to your morning or evening or daytime routine would be great for you and then how to dry brush and the dry brush I use. Now uh, Nadine from Living Libations was on a, a few weeks ago and I have been using her products for a very long time and her brush is top notch for me. So I definitely love using her products. I will put the link in the show notes. But why, why, why should you dry brush? Like seriously, why bother? All right, well, let's jump, jump into six reasons here. So dry brushing the body increases circulation. Oh, well, who cares? Well, it's really important because circulation sustains us. It's the blood flow. It's the life force energy within us. And our circulatory system is the pathway that supports or sorry, supplies vital nutrients and oxygen to every part of our body. And it pushes waste and toxins out. And we've been talking a lot about that. Go back to last week's episode. I gave you 11 reasons, um, 11 things you can do to help naturally detox your body. Okay, so slow or stagnant circulation can cause some serious issues for your cells, organ functions, energy levels, and overall energy. So one little two-minute habit a day, look at the impact that is having day after day after day. Now, you may not notice this, but these are the things that are happening inside of you, okay? So even though the skin is your largest organ, it's also the last to receive nutrients from the body. So dry brushing the body provides a much needed boost of blood flow to keep skin nourished, clear, and radiant. And I know there are so many of you that, um, you know, your skin is giving you issues. Remember your skin is a sign or a symptom that something deeper is happening inside your body and that's what you want to address. So we were just talking about this in my midlife reboot program, that the skin is a sign or a symptom. And yes, you can try and get rid of the, the itchy, the bumpy, that kind of thing, but it's coming from typically your gut or your liver. So you need to do some work in those areas. Again, these are things we dive deeper into in my midlife reboot program. If you have any questions, please ask me about that. All right. So when you have increased blood flow, you have amazing skin that just looks nourished and glowing and healthy. All right, number two, why dry brush? Well, dry brushing the body provides gentle exfoliation. All right, so many of you may be using harsh or aggressive or abrasive um, exfoliants. They're just not necessary and they actually may be doing more ha um, harm than good. So instead, using a nice dry brush with gentle, gentle strokes, with natural bristles, that's why I love a Living Libations brush, is all you need to reveal the smoother, softer skin beneath, right? And dry brushing the body is far more gentle, plus it doesn't have any toxic uh, you know, elements because there's no product you're putting on your body. And it's just far more gentle and supports your body's natural healing capabilities, bringing nutrients to the surface 
and encouraging natural cell, cell turnover. So your skin cells are constantly turning over. Dry brushing the body effectively exfoliates and sloughs off dry, scaly skin, which improves the skin's texture and tone. And I know, ladies, ladies, there are many of you that want to have beautiful skin. And I'm telling you, this really works. I have been doing it for so long, and I probably dry brush 95% of the year. They go on my vacation to ask my husband. Uh, I have a lot of brushes. <laughs> I've got dry brushing, tooth brushing, body brushing, uh, hair brushing. Anyway, okay, so an added benefit of dry brushing associated with exfoliation is that it brilliantly preps skin to absorb moisture. And without proper exfoliation, you may slather moisturizer on top of layers of dull, dehydrated, and dead skin cells. So moisturizing in this way doesn't allow for the nutrients to deeply hydrate and heal, right? And so you're spending money on these products and they're not getting into the skin where you want them. So products better absorb after dry brushing the body, resulting in a truly moisturized and happy skin. Now I have to tell you, I've been dry brushing for so long, I don't use a lot of cream on my body because for some reason, dry brushing, right, is just bringing all this beautiful nutrition and and um, fluid and whatever. I mean, it's, it's not pouring out of my body, but it's just bringing a nice tone to my skin. And uh, anyway, there you go. Okay, so another interesting benefit of dry brushing over like the traditional exfoliation, which I talked about was like taking salt or actually salt's a good one, but any beauty product that may not have the best ingredients is that you don't disrupt the skin's delicate microbiome. So yes, your skin has its own microbiome, just like your gut, right? And so your skin, like I just mentioned, has its own mini microbiome of necessary and beneficial bacteria. And if you over exfoliate, you can damage this microbiome, which is also caused or also called for, you might hear this, um, the moisture barrier. So this can result in irritated, inflamed and dry skin because your skin has no barrier to lock in the moisture or keep out bad bacteria. So dry brushing the body is a win-win for keeping your skin um, deeply absorbs and uses the moisture that you apply afterwards, okay? So we're working with our skin instead of against it. All right, number three, dry brushing helps detox the body and improves lymphatic drainage. Now, I talked last week about the lymph, I believe. I talk about the lymph a lot. Your lymph does not have a pump. So I'm gonna actually talk about it in a second here just to give you an idea of what your lymphatic system is and why it's so important. But one of the most powerful, important benefits of dry brushing is stimulating this lymph flow and the drainage that follows. And we, like I, as I mentioned last week, when you're detoxing, right, it's not just about getting the, the toxins out of the fat cell and then out of the bloodstream, it's gotta get them out of the body. So drainage may sound a little, but it's really important to have this essential lymphatic drainage for radiant skin, a healthy body, and a glowing self. So just by adding this dry brushing in to your daily habits is a great way to detox your body on a support your detox, I should say, on a daily basis. So your lymphatic system is a network of tissues, vessels, and organs, right? And they all work together to move where you don't even, you know, know what's going on, but there's this watery fluid called lymph and um, it just takes us back up to your circulatory system via you're also known as your bloodstream, okay? So this system stretches across your entire body to protect you from toxins. And here's what each part of your lymphatic system does. So you've got lymphatic vessels, which move excess fluids and toxins from your lymph fluid to your nodes or lymphatic organs for processing. So, you know, many of you may have had, uh, you can feel the lymph in your neck. You can feel it when it's hard. Um, it's really nice just to take your fingers right now and just do a nice little teeny tiny soft massage on there. Oh, that's very nice. 
Um, you have your lymph nodes, which are the filtering stations that capture unhealthy cells and toxins. And then you have your lymphatic organs, continue the detoxification program, process sorry, to remove lingering toxins. So you've got various lymphatic organs in your body. These include your spleen, your thymus, your tonsils, your adenoids, bone marrow, your appendix, right? And so this lymphatic system sends toxins out the door. And this is why I'm always going on about that we are just cells, that we need to keep our cells healthy. We have to keep our organs functioning. This is why I love rolling. I have a program called Get Rid of Aches and Pains, Get Rid of Your Cellulite. It's in my rolling program. If I remember, I will put it on there or ask me. And I teach you a great way. I love rolling. I just love it. And it's really helped so many of my clients. But this helps to send those toxins out the door and keep your detox pathways open. So your lymphatic system helps to detoxify your whole body and provides immunity against disease. Seriously? Right. Okay, so this is why we need to care for that lymphatic system. And if you're always sitting, you're not pumping your lymphatic system. So your lymphatic system helps to detoxify your whole entire body and provide immunity against disease. But when this system becomes blocked, it can cause toxic buildup in your tissues, leading to blemishes, rashes, irritations, and other skin conditions. And this is what I was saying. Your skin is telling you that your system is in need of some work. And again, if you relate this to a car, right? We don't wanna just keep putting pretty coats of paint on the outside of our car. That's not gonna help it run. We really need to, you know, does it have the right amount of uh, power steering fluid? How about oil? How about gas? How about power brakes? How about, I don't know a lot about cars, but anyway. Um, you want to have all those moving parts so that you have a properly functioning car. And we spend more time and energy and money on our car sometimes making sure it runs than we do our body. And that is why I'm here, because I really want you to be healthy and vibrant and energetic and, you know, live passionately and vibrantly in those years, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 and beyond right? And it starts with doing some really important daily habits, weekly habits, monthly habits. I share everything I can with you on this podcast. Okay. So when you are dry brushing, you are using like these really light, simple strokes that help to stimulate this lymph flow to flush out toxins and waste. It clears your pores. It eliminates more toxins through sweat. And with fewer toxins and more nutrients, you're going to experience a strengthened immune system less sickness, increased energy levels, fewer areas of discoloration or damage to your skin, and less skin sensitive uh, less sorry skin sensitivity. So by adding dry brushing to your beauty routine like I said I do in the morning, you are promoting radiant skin, a daily detox, and you do feel invigorated. I cannot tell you how I will dry brush for 2 minutes and it sparks me up. And then if you have it stack like we've been talking about, and you want to pull in some circadian rhythm, you can dry brush, go outside in the morning, get some morning light if that's accessible to you. I live remotely, so I can go outside naked. Nobody's going to see me. And I will dry brush my body while I'm getting some sunshine in. So, and if that's too much, maybe just go outside and brush your teeth for now. Okay. So when we're talking about radiant skin, you can really expect to see some changes just after doing this regularly, all right? And it will improve your skin com uh, complexion. I'm having trouble speaking today. All right, this is one, this is a big one because I'm always asked about cellulite. And yes, dry brushing, okay, helps to improve the appearance of cellulite. I go into this in my aches and pains course in my Vibrant Living Academy. Cellulite is just a marketing term. Let's just get that, um, straight out at the beginning here. It's when your fascia, your connective tissue is becoming weaker and drier and it's pushing the fat through. And then they've made up the term cellulite. 
Okay, so the real root cause of cellulite is decreasing your fat cells, the size of your fat cells by getting the toxins out. And your weight is just a sign and symptom of something else in your body, which means typically you may be taking in too much energy in the form of food. You may not have a, a very good diet. Your hydration may be low. I did a whole podcast. Um, I don't remember the episode, but just um, I'll see if I can remember to put that in there. And you can have a listen to that. I go into in depth about the cellulite. So if you want to help have a brighter, happier complexion and start to reduce the appearance of cellulite, then grab that dry brush because it's going to help remove dull, dead skin. It's going to make you look fresher, younger. And there you go. That could be the, 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 the point that pushes you over the edge to grab that dry brush and start dry brushing again. <laughs> it's going to work to smooth away impurities in the skin, okay, and decrease the appearance of cellulite. All right, so there's no solid research on this, but I have heard it, I see it in myself. And, you know, it's just like I said, it's believed to soften those fat deposits and just you know, reduce that appearance of cellulite, but keep hydrated, listen to the episode on cellulite and get some more tips there. Okay, fascia. I've talked a lot about fascia. I love fascia. I've done, uh, I think it's episode number 68 with Deanna Hansen, which we talked about fascia and blocking. I've done, I think it's episode number 38, how I changed my life with rolling. Fascia changed my life. It calmed my nervous system and I'm going to do some more episodes on nervous system because I'm just learning so much more. It's so fascinating, all the research that's coming out now. But if I can tell you to start paying attention to your fascia, please do so. Um, again, I have lots of rolling programs in my Vibrant Living Academy. So fascia is a very thin layer of connective tissue that runs throughout your entire body. Okay, it's right underneath your skin. It holds everything together and it is like a bodysuit. Just think of it as a bodysuit underneath your skin. And they're finding more and more and more about the fascia and the lymphatic system. There's still so much unknown. Medical, um, you, once upon a time in the medical industry, they used to just throw away this connective tissue, okay? But we're learning that it is really important. What we do know now, just like muscles, fascia can de de uh, develop knots, tightness, tension, adhesions, and they can cause discomfort in your body and stop it from functioning optimally. Again, another reason why I block and roll, because when you release these knots, these tensions, these adhesions, you start to have a better functioning body and reduce the aches and pains. You also have issues in your tissues. So on an emotional level, you can really start to deal with some little T trauma, maybe big T trauma. But the health of your fascia really affects the internal health since it's collected to, or sorry, connected to your lymphatic system, your circulation, and otherly other bodily functions, which is critical for, for full body health. Okay, and as I've mentioned, dehydration and lack of movement both negatively affect the fascia. So dry brushing can assist with getting this flow and this circulation increasing absorption, hydration within the body. It's a beautiful, gentle massage when you, you know, use the, the brush to move gently. I'll tell you how in a moment, because it's stimulating that tissue and helping to work out adhesions and tensions. It's like a little massage for you every day. And it's really good at calming your nervous system. And so many of us are living in a sympathetic fight flight nervous system and it's causing us, oh my gosh, a lot of issues, which we'll, we'll, we will talk about on another podcast. Okay, and finally, just kind of leaning a little bit more into the nervous system, the dry brushing really helps to activate the parasympathetic nervous system, which is your rest and digest. It's, it's like the parasympathetic nervous system is responsible for bringing your body into balance when you get stressed and anxious and scared. So you can see like dry brushing is so much more than just having amazing looking skin. It also just softens your heart, your soul, your mind and relaxes you. So we all have a lot of stress. 
all of us have stress and it is just really an important self-care technique that you can bring something in that's very easy, very affordable, and it's relaxing and it's very rewarding. You can do it at the beginning of the day like I do. Sometimes I do it again before bed, but it just, this gentle rhythmic motion can really lull you into a relaxed state by activating your vagus nerve, which is another podcast I will do because the vagus nerve is a beautiful nerve that extends throughout your body, sending signals, good and bad, to your brain. And so when you gently stimulate this vagus nerve through light, rhythmic touch, it sends positive calming signals to your brain and throughout your body. Again, another reason why I also do rolling. Okay. So let's just have a little um, recap here. Dry brushing helps to loosen the dead skin to allow the toxins a clear and quick exit out of your skin and leaves your uh, skin feeling soft and glowing. It can reduce the appearance of cellulite. It stimulates your immune system. It wakes up your circulation. It moves your lymph and so much more that we just talked about. So what do you do? Okay, so basically, I, like I said, when I was on this adventure many, many, many years ago, I bought the, you know, the synthetic glove. And I just, I don't know, I didn't want synthetic on my skin. But that could be a place that you start. And then I bought, I don't know, I bought other brushes. And then I, I finally got the one from Living Libations. I've been using that. I love it. It's got bronze ions in it. You can read all about it on the website. And I just, I just fell in love with that one. So you basically start at your feet, you move all the way up to your body, you use wide circular clockwise motions, you use light pressure where your skin is thin and harder pressure on thicker areas like the soles of your feet, your kneecaps maybe, um, my calves, your thighs, whatever you want to do, the side of my legs, my butt, um, my belly. And then you brush your arms after you've brushed your legs and your midsection. And you always brush upwards towards your armpits. And then when you're doing the arms, you go from your fingers down to your armpits. And then if you'd like after dry brushing, you can take a cold shower to remove or a cool shower, I should say, warm, whatever, uh, to remove some of the dead skin. But I'm telling you, when you dry brush with the brushes I use, you can see the dead skin coming off. I, you know, I dry brush in the morning. That is when I dry brush and then I get my clothes on. And like I said, sometimes I'll dry brush at night and then have a shower, but my routine is in the morning. And then after your shower, you can dry off and add some nice, you know, product that is non-toxic. I've talked a lot about skincare products. You can check out Beauty Counter. I have a link. If you could use my store link, that would be amazing. I'll put it in the show notes. Living Libations, I use her products and I also use Skin Essence. Or you can do the cheaper chicken and go get yourself some organic uh, coconut oil and some buy an aloe vera plant and play around with that. And I am very crafty in the kitchen, but I don't make my own uh you know beauty care products i buy those okay so the only thing when you're doing your dry brushing is you want to avoid sensitive areas where the skin is broken so just you don't want to be like you know uh brushing on rashes wounds cuts and infections right so just keep that in mind and then when you're doing your face you really want to use a softer brush i have a little soft brush from living libations i love it i also have their breast brush but I think I've been brushing for so long that I really um, just use the energy brush um, around my breasts. I also have Living Librations, sorry, breast tonic. I also have a, they don't sell this, so I have it from somewhere else, a back brush. Because sometimes I like going up and down my spine. Or my husband sometimes will brush my back really deeply for me. So... What supplies do you need? Well, you need a dry brush, okay? And you can go out and you can experiment or you can click my link and go to Living Libations. You can pick up their dry brushes, get their Lymph Plus Tonic. And um, those are just the products I have found the absolute best for myself. And what was I going to say? I was going to say one other thing, but it's kind of escaped me. So I'll come back to that. I'll see if I do. And oh, yes, the breast oil. 
It's beautiful. I love their breast oil to massage my breasts. So that is something else I'll do. And I do that weekly or monthly. So the dry brushing is definitely a daily, daily habit for me. So again, you can pick up the facial brush. There's a body and breast brush. And then there's the energy brush, which has the copper and zinc in it. Okay, everybody. So let me know in the, you know, the comments below, do you dry brush? Does this, do you have a dry brush? And now you're like, oh my God, I'm going to go get my dry brush. How can you make it a habit? Can you habit stack? Right. I mean, I'm, I'm just, I, I cannot leave my house without my dry brush. Like it goes everywhere because it feels that good to me. And sometimes when I'm feeling, you know, a little low in my day, um, I, I will sometimes just dry brush my arms and I feel better. Like it's really just such an amazing tool. Like, I, you know, anyway, I've just gone over all the benefits. So do you dry brush? Do you have a dry brush that you're not using that you're going to start to use? How can you start to have it stack that into your day so that you use it? You don't have to go to five days a week. You could just do this as a Saturday or Sunday routine and then pick it up from there. I do different facial things besides brushing and I'll do them say like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I'll do a different thing on Tuesday, Thursday. I might do that for a couple of weeks and then I take, you know, like just do it on a Wednesday. You just find what works for you and how you want to incorporate it into your life. But dry brushing, like I've said a lot, I do it 95 plus times, 95% I should say of the time because it feels that good. So ladies, thank you for listening to the Menopause Made Easy podcast with Tanya. Please share this with your girlfriends. Your, um, I'd love for you to subscribe so you don't miss an episode. I would love for you to uh, rate it and even leave a comment because that really is helpful um, in other people finding me and all the information that I have to share. And I'm on a mission just to make your life better. And when our lives are better, we just feel better and we do more things and we just get more excitement out of it. And if you really want to do a little bit of a deeper dive, like you're tired of the vicious cycle of trying this or that with no real guidance, you're not being accountable to yourself, check out the midlife reboot that I run where we focus on dropping fat effectively, boosting our energy, mastering our mind. And we really dive into mindset, movement, and nutrition. And in the mindset category, we talk about resetting our nervous system. And we'll use different modalities like uh, tapping. We don't always do all of these. So sometimes I'll mention tapping. We'll do a little thing. And then, you know, you try it. You see if you like it. How does it fit? So there's all different skills that we learn, but tapping and self-help, no, uh, uh, sorry, self-hypnosis and trigger patterns, sabotage patterns, self-worth is a huge one, deservedness, abundance, pleasure, joy, and releasing what no longer serves you. And we really talk about what thoughts are helpful and not helpful. And I'm telling you, just from doing this for so long, you don't realize things unless they're brought into your awareness. Remember, I did an episode on your reticular activating system. Really important. This information that I share with you in the Midlife Reboot program is current. It's it's on point, And we bring it into how can we actually start to apply what works for you without you spending hours and hours and hours and hours researching. That's what I do. We also incorporate movement. What movement works best for you? Because we really want to prevent osteoporosis or minimize it from happening. We want to work on balance and mobility and stability and flexibility and strength. And what are your daily movements? How do you want to function and play with your grandkids and travel and just be vibrant and energetic? How does rolling and blocking and fascia play into your lymphatic system with boosting your immune system, with decreasing aches and pains? How does breathing help to reset your nervous system? Cardio for a very strong heart. Heart disease is a major killer among women. It's not talked about, but we really need to look after our heart. We increase our happy, uh, our happy hormones, and we also talk about weight loss, and which, as you know, I've said a thousand times, but it's fat loss and weight management or body composition management. And then we go into nutrition. What does a balanced plate 
look like for you in, you know, your, your thirties, your forties, your fifties, your sixties, it changes, it looks different. And so how do you keep up with the nutrients that your body requires? Um, how do you eat to decrease your cravings? right? How do you eat to support gut health and organ health and liver health? Like we talked about all those lymphatic organs that we need. What about nutrition for vitality and vibrancy and energy? And then we'll talk about emotional eating, situational eating, obligatory eating, habitual eating, spiral eating. And then how can we start eating without feeling shame and guilt? How can we eat to balance our blood sugars? How can we incorporate fasting? So as you can see, you are going to learn a lot of different skills. You're not going to learn them all in one day. You're not going to apply them to your life all in one day. But what you will start to do is really understand the um, skills that help to move you forward and you practice them and we tweak them and you have support and community and me in this fabulous group. And it really helps to just increase the health vitality in your life. So if that's of interest, if there's always a link at the end of the show notes, you can check it out. I'm always here if you have questions for me. Again, thank you for listening. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you in the next episode.